why this small group is in Blythe for a month, staying with local families and experiencing life northeast style. Horse riding lessons, trips to Flamingoland, Metroland, burgers at McDonald's, cartoons at the cinema, you name it, they've done it and loved every minute. It couldn't be more different, in fact, from life back in the Soviet Union. These kids come from a huge orphanage 180 miles from Chernobyl. 10,000 youngsters live in the institution and have little or no privacy. 200 or more sleep in each dormitory, and this has had a telling effect on six-year-old Daniel. Initially, um, he was very shy, I suppose, like most children being introduced to strange people. But now, um, going to bed, particularly in the night time, it's hugs and kisses and, you know, this sort of thing. And initially, um, it was very difficult to get them to change clothes or get their clothes off because, as we later found out, the fear of them not being there in the morning was there. But now, I, I think they've, they've grown to uh, trust. That it, they're still expecting their clothes and, and their toys, etc., to be there the next morning. Breathing clean air, eating uncontaminated food and getting lots of healthy exercise helps to reduce the radiation sickness the youngsters suffer as a result of the disaster. It's estimated that a month's stay here could put an extra 10 years on their lives. Any funds raised to bring more children from Chernobyl to this country will remain in the UK. Cash sent to the Soviet Union is often creamed off by the authorities and only a small percentage gets through to those who need it. But inevitably, there are worries that the experience the children have had here during their month-long stay will only make life more difficult for them when they get home. Even the children have expressed themselves that they don't want to go back. But at the end of the day, um, it's sad to say, and it's certainly going to be you know, a traumatic experience, I, I would suggest, for the families to see the children going back, particularly knowing what they're going to go back to. Igor himself appreciates this. But at the end of the day, we must realize that the reason they're here is for their health. Now, if we can do that for a month, or any other families in the Northeast can do that for a month, certainly then we'd have, we have achieved, um, we've done the best that we can do, really. It's going to be a really emotional time um, for everyone. And uh, I just, I don't like to really think about it. We have thought about it, but at the moment, it's it's such a, it's going to be a traumatic situation um, for us as well as for the for the children. But for a few of the children, there's the prospect of a more permanent future here in the northeast. Some of the families are hoping to adopt them. Santa Claus didn't have his dates wrong, he just had a very special reason for getting his sack of toys out early. On Sunday, these five boys return to a world very different to the one they've been part of for the last month. They all come from the Soviet town of Chernobyl, scene of the world's worst nuclear reactor accident in April 1986. The boys, aged between six and nine, came to this country as part of an international scheme to allow children affected by the subsequent radioactive fallout to get away from the contaminated atmosphere for a short while. They've been staying with families in the Blythe area of Northumberland. They arrived with a very, very small holder containing one pair of trousers, one sweatshirt, one toothbrush, one towel, a pair of slippers and a packet of biscuits. What's it? going to be like for yourself and the other families on Sunday when you have to say goodbye? Well, I hope Gallagher sta uh, Bus Station has a good supply of tissues because they'll need them. They're not affected too badly at the moment with the radiation, but we have been told that maybe in four or five years' time things might start showing. There'll be tears on Sunday when these children say goodbye, but plans are already being made to bring them and more back next year. This trip's a combination of the goodwill of three different groups. The main charity which has brought the children over has been helped by Taxi Aid, an organization of Northeast drivers who are chauffeuring the youngsters around. 
and the Showman's Guild has allowed them free rides for the afternoon. The 14 children between the ages of 8 and 10 were all orphaned by the Chernobyl disaster in 1986. They've been exposed to high doses of radiation and are still eating contaminated food. But the excitement of seeing, for what many of them is their first funfair, has overshadowed this. Back home in Bilo, Russia, money is scarce. The orphanage where they live is poor and trips are a rarity. So today's treat was particularly special. But aside from giving them a lot of fun, their stay in England will bring other benefits. Two things really, um, the children all live in an institution, which is 250 children, and we all know how institutional care is a, a difficult experience for all children. Um, it gives these particular youngsters a chance to live in a family, and that is the basis on which we bring them across, that they will go into a family. And the second is for health reasons. The area they live in is still heavily contaminated with radiation from the Chernobyl disaster. All of the soil is contaminated, the, the play areas that they live in are contaminated, the water. So they have an opportunity of a month of uncontaminated food and air, which is obviously beneficial to their health. Medicine and Chernobyl is already planning next year's trip when they hope to bring more youngsters over. No one can dispute the enjoyment of this year's visitors. Yet another typical northeast gesture of warm for the sick children of Chernobyl. Today, staff at Russell and Bromley's shoe shop in the Gateshead Metro Centre sacrifice part of their wages to fit out the 13 youngsters. But when they go back to Bilo, Russia in 10 days' time, shoes will offer no protection against the deadly hazards of radiation poisoning. They come from an area less than 200 miles north of Chernobyl, which spewed out its radioactive cocktail back in 1986. They were put in an orphanage because most of their parents died, victims of the nuclear disaster. For some of them, it's their second trip to the northeast for a month's break from the miseries. They live with families in Blythe in Northumberland, who don't mind making the sacrifices to look after them. She's been really wonderful. Um, the, the communication's a bit difficult, but like all children, you just show them what you want them to do and they get on with it. <laughs> it's been a very humbling and a very levelling experience. Uh, to put all our problems into perspective because you realise that these children have nothing. It's been a magical mystery tour for the youngsters, but the trip has a medical purpose too. Where they come from, they're forced to eat contaminated food and drink. Their immune systems become weak, they're prone to disease, they lose their appetites and they get headaches and bleed easily. Their holidays in the northeast helps rebuild their bodies. It's been estimated that as many as half a million children have been orphaned as a direct result of the Chernobyl nuclear accident. But at an international conference on radiation here in Newcastle this weekend, leading experts will argue that the situation is now even more desperate. One of the delegates from Minsk has come up with a disturbing study, which suggests that the health facts on the Chernobyl aftermath have been covered up. Some of them certainly believe that because they are finding more effects than what the official estimates are supposed to reveal, they believe that those, these evidence is being suppressed by uh, representatives of the nuclear industry. The group of families in Blythe in Northumberland set up to take care of the youngsters when they're in the northeast have extended their activities. They've taken food to Belarusia and were horrified by what the children have to put up with. They fear now that when the children return home, some might not survive. They have, in actual fact, good, good medical facilities, i.e. good doctors. But the problem is, of course, they have not got the necessary equipment to deal with the, the, the problems that they've got. We try hard to be brave and not cry. Um, but I know for a fact that I will when he does go, because um, it's just been so wonderful having him here. There are clearly worrying days ahead for these delightful youngsters. One of the visitors last year has already died. But for the next few days, they'll at least enjoy the good things in the northeast. And no one will deny them their little bit of joy.